Lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree. It's probably absolutely trolleyed. <laughs> I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking, how am I going to cope? All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Camino. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Hi, Kathy and Scott. We've got a stroke DTA for you. Da, 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 da. Hi, mate. Hey, any majors? Can I help you? I'm the sister in charge of majors. Senior sister Jen has worked at King's A&E for 10 years. Yeah. She's in charge of the staff and patients' welfare on tonight's shift. Yeah. It is stressful. It is stressful. But some days I go in there and I just think, Jesus, this is just, this is crazy. I don't know how I do this. Joe? Hello? Joe? Hello? Listen, you seem like a reasonable person, probably, when you're sober, but you've wet yourself, you've vomited all over yourself, and I don't think you'd like to lie in your own pee and vomit, do you? I know you can hear me, and you're choosing to ignore me. Do you know what I mean? Joe, come on now, wake up. Come on, you're in hospital. Wake up. You, you've urinated all over yourself. We're going to put a drip in your arm, OK? There's a young lady who's just been put into Bay 5. She's been out tonight, had a skin full of alcohol and needs a bit of a clean-up. Okay. Strip her clothes off, put her in a gown, do her observations, make sure she has BM. I'll stick a line in her, give her some fluids and she can... Is that all right? Yeah. Number five, if both of you do, do her together, she's vomited all over herself, so she's a delight. Thanks. I mean, I've worked in a few A&Es in London and there's nowhere like Kings. We put up with a lot, so I think we try and support each other as much as possible, and that's what I like about Kings. We're all... If something happens, if the shit really hits the fan, then we all pull together to make sure it's all all right. Can you see that? Oh shit, fuck it. Mum, why is it called King's College Hospital? So that's the name of the hospital and that's about the staff. Because a, a lot of times they have patients that come in oh, that are not very nice and that are very rude to the staff and that say aggressive things and they act aggressive. Ah! 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 Ah!
still currently at that address. Um, what's his telephone number? So what's the problem tonight? What happened? Uh, nothing. Nothing? I was going to my home and I paid my fare. Bus, the bus said to me, don't take you home. OK, but probably because you're... Ah. No, 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 no. Not properly. Ha, 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 ha. No, you're wrong. Properly because I pay my fare, I'm a good citizen. Ah. I'm very polite, I'm very educated. I know, but you're very loud. No. Yes. I'm very loud, I'm very deaf. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. And don't try and scare me either, because it doesn't work. No, no, I don't try to scare you. I try to tell you the truth. You were just Excuse speaking me. to me very, very softly, so you can talk. I'm quietly. sorry. I'm half deaf. I cannot speak to you. you, if you, you I, I speak you just... loudly. No, no, no. You didn't. Don't. All right. Then does it work? I probably get shouted at every day. People swear. They shout. They demand. Over the years, I've been called dyke, lesbian, and that used to really get on my nerves. But now, actually, well, I am. So, hey ho. You can't ever be scared coming to work. People know if you're scared. They're like animals, they can smell your fear. And as soon as you're scared, you are the people that they're going to abuse. So what's, what do you want me to do today? Huh? What would you like me to do? I don't need you to do anything for me. Oh, well, you can leave then. Yeah, oh. I want to leave. Do you have an appointment at St George's? I don't understand English. Oh, absolute rubbish. Time to I don't understand English. Let's go. You understand very good English. No, so. I don't speak yes, English. Yes, you do. OK. Bye-bye. Ha, 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 See ya. <laughs> I think much of it is manipulative, to be honest. I'll find it. I don't speak English. He understands everything. <laughs> A very strong person will work and stay at King's because it is so stressful, because it is so busy. Um, you have to be uh, strong-willed, determined, maybe a little bit aggressive sometimes, and, uh, yeah, but with a bit of a sense of humour and compassion, of course. In 2010, there were 60,000 recorded assaults against NHS staff in England alone. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. So, we thought we'd, we'd have a bet on this one. Dr drink, drugs or crime? That's the reason for this trauma. Amy does breed particular nurses and sometimes you have to be able to make light of what you're doing. At any time, if you laugh, it makes you feel good. So if you see something pretty gruesome and you have a laugh about it, then it instantly, the stress and that horror, because sometimes it is horrific. So what do you reckon, Kirsty? Either drink, drugs or crime? Um, drink, drugs or crime, drugs. OK. I'm going to put for drink. Are you going to take crime? I'm going to be MDMA. I must admit, I've got a bit of, maybe a bit of a warped sense of humour, so I find um, things funny. Like that guy who was shot in the penis, I did find that, that made me laugh for a whole shift. Because <laughs> he just kept looking down at it, and I thought, yeah, I'm sure you are looking down at it, just thinking. His pupils are quite small, but he has been drinking, and we he's taken So we drink and drugs, so you were almost right. The department works round the clock and has over 200 employees. Behind the scenes, 60 non-medical staff keep things ticking over.
My name is Kevin Hillman and I'm a porter in a and &E. I was actually born in this hospital and I just I wanted to work here. Please. My job involves taking patients up to the wards, taking them to x-rays, collecting bloods and occasionally doing removals. A removal is when somebody passes away and we have to take their body down to the mortuary. Kevin the porter is, he calls me his big sister. Um, I think he sees me as a bit of a supporting figure and I have a bit of a soft spot for him, I do. He's, he's absolutely, he's, he's crazy. OK, let me call Reece us, all right? Cos I know he's probably in there with a trauma call, so... All right, love, no worries. Thanks, bye. Bye. How are you, sis? I'm all right, Kev, how are Good you? Good to be back. Oh, are, you, are you happy to be back, are you? Yeah. It's all hey, out of me, I'm grandma. grandma it's Jen. Oh. But, you know, he works so damn hard and he will do anything for me. You know, it's not too much trouble to do the blood run every half an hour for Kevin, whereas other people it'll be every two hours and that'll be at a push, you know? Porter to Majors, Porter to Majors to collect blood specimens, please. Parker, wicked. When we have to get flying squad blood, we, we can't hang around. We just have to go straight down there and pick up the blood and bring it back. Did they're, did they're urgent, Kevin, they've got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have to get that blood back to the patient as urgently as possible because the patient could be bleeding to death. He could be. I'm there to save lives, help people. I am. Can I get a porter? Can I get a porter? Yeah, give us them. I'll take them. I'm going that way, I've got to go theatres. Right, that here. And two. What a night, David. What a night. Adult trauma call, five minutes. Adult trauma call, five minutes. It's going to be one for me. Mm -hmm. Ex-Army chef Kevin hopes to one day be a supervising porter. Some people say I am the fastest porter at the moment in the hospital, they reckon. Mm -hmm. That's a cylinder looking. Hmm? Cylinder full. You've got a full cylinder, okay? And it's a valve one. Cool. I like to see the action. I've seen um, stabbings, I've seen shootings. What is it? Uh, multiple stabbing to the leg. So, leg. You'll, so you want me to hang around for a flying squad blood? Just yeah, in case. That'd be useful, yeah. We actually get a bleep, a trauma bleep. And when that goes off, that means we have to attend there and go there straight away. And we have to stay there, just in case the doctor says to us, can you go down and get the trauma blood? Yeah, I'll hang around just in case you need blood. Blood pressure's fine at the moment, but you never know what they've stabbed in. It could be an artery and it could be... Yeah, drops. I like a bit of trauma. I mean, I must admit, it sounds a bit gory, but I do like a nice shooting or a bit of a stabbing with bow hanging out. You right? Yeah. Yeah. If we run a good trauma, it's fantastic. And if you save someone's life when they've come in in that mess, then it's brilliant. Oh, multiple stab wounds. To legs. To legs, yeah, I know. But well, you never know. Could be, could be Could be. Could bleed out, like, in a little second, eh? Penetrating trauma to the chest, which is stab wounds. King's is one of the busiest hospitals in all of Europe. 
The areas we serve in London are particularly high crime areas. Are you able to shimmy on over, my friend? Sometimes, you know, you're looking at two or three stamps a day. So the numbers have, have, have risen up. It seems that, you know, people's way of fighting has moved on from, from punching each other to using bats, to using knives, to using guns. OK, so he's got a uh, trachea in midline. 17-year-old Levi was stabbed during a fight on the street. Entry in the right, normal percussion bilaterally. Um, Sats are... What is that? Sats are just coming up now. Hey, just, just relax your tummy there for me, yeah? Is there any, any soreness in the tummy or not really? Good on you. Just take, a, just take a nice big deep breath. Good, man. That's all good, huh? So abdomen's soft and non-tender. So he's got... Um, a laceration, just medial to the uh, to the mid part of the scapula. Yeah? yeah. He's got another one immediately paraspinally at about the level of one, two, three, about T3, and another one at T4 on the right. He's got no other no other stab wounds on his legs or around his genitals. He's not completely well, but it um, doesn't appear to be life-threatening at the moment, from what we know. But he's going to go up for some scans. Uh, are you, uh, you going to make any allegations for this? No, you're not going to talk to us? That's fine, yeah, just, just wanted to know. Um, you might just have to sign a quick, quick signature to say that you don't want us to take any further action for this, all right? Levi's condition isn't life-threatening but he needs extensive stitching and he'll be in hospital overnight. They will all go numb, all right? Did you manage to get any punches in? Yeah. Good one, I punched him first. Fuck, fuck. Ah, so you brought it upon yourself, did you? Ah, you tried to swing for me. Oh, I see. Yeah. I moved, I dodged it and banged him against the wall. And he pulled a knife out? Yeah, the prick. Do you know who it is? Ah. A lot will come in highly pumped up with adrenaline. But sometimes you can be having to deal with a lot of aggression from the patient. Levi, your mother is really yeah. upset. But she yeah. really loved to see exactly. you. He's one of the other consultants. He did. Well, he's taking over is being in charge of here. So of he's me. just making of all the patients in here. Now your mother really wants to see you, she's really upset. So she should be like, Well just will you just let her see you? Why? You can't say to your mother that you don't want to see her. She's your mother, she gave birth to you. Come on. She's really upset. Oh for Do you have to come then? Fucking hell, man. You know, once it's kicked in how lucky they've been, um, then sometimes they can they can be a little bit quiet. And sometimes family members can not even be aware that they were out, and you get a lot of emotion from some of the mums. I went in and and I just wanted to sort of scoop him up, but then, you know, he kept saying, I'm all right, Mum, I'm all right. And he just looked so small, he looked, he, he, he looked about 12. You know, once or twice they said, well, will you come out? They were doing blood tests or whatever, they were doing different things. And it just felt so routine to them. And I thought, well, this is my son, this isn't routine. I don't expect this, this is not something I expected.
what used to shock me ten years ago, I've I've seen it, so it no, no longer goes, <gasps> you know. But I think the fact that we get a lot of violence is shocking. The fact that people don't like each other very much is shocking. But the actual injuries and things don't shock me because unfortunately I've seen too much. <laughs> Approximately half of all penetrative injuries seen at King's are a result of violent assault. Can you tell me what happened today? I got punched in the face by a man okay. because he thought that I knocked on his window. Right, OK. And was it just one punch? One punch and I fell to the floor. You fell to the floor. Did you hit anything on the way down? Uh, no, it was on gravel. It was on gravel. Just look up for me. Oops, <laughs> that's all. OK. How wide can you open your mouth for me? Open as wide as you can. Go, 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 go. Wider, 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 wider. Oops. What happened? It hurts. <laughs> Where does it hurt? It just hurts here. It just hurts there. Mm -hmm. OK. I'm in the hospital. My fat is as fucking... My foot is fat as fuck. Where are you in kebab shop? I oh, will stay there. Come up in an hour. Come in an hour. All right, I'll see you soon, babe. All right, bye. We were always going to the club until I fell off the bus. And then I fell off the bus. Don't step on my foot. <laughs> Just a bit. Absolutely trolled. Trolled. On free, free alcohol? Yeah. Yeah, just I knew it. Out, just come out of the House of Commons. Uh, <laughs> nice. On our, our money, then? Oh, yes. Oh, Why fantastic. Why couldn't you come to Tommy's, then? Yeah. Why couldn't you come to Tommy's, just across the water? No, I, I, no, I didn't. Did you hear what I said, Luke? He's just come out of Commons. I said he's been drinking in the House of Commons. You said he's just come out of the Commons. All right. OK, sorry. But we're picking up the clothes right You didn't say that. You didn't say that. Well, it comes here, and I don't really care. I'll sort of put on your son. Health medical history. Uh, how do I know? He wouldn't give me his date of birth. What do you thought I might well, have really might, Well, I thought that was, that was part of your training. Potty training? Yes, I could do that as well. Did you say potty training? I thought that was part of your training. Oh, part. So when you start speaking like this. In it, bruv. In it, man. Get me. Get me. Any obs? Uh, refused. Uh, we've got one more test for you. You have to come and sit back in the chair. Ah. Fantastic. Okay. Right. I'll give you ten seconds and I'm gonna put you in the chair myself. Gosh. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I no, I, I, I won't do that. Come on, you're wasting time. Hey, God, no, you're God. wasting time. We need to go and look after other people. We're cool. We're doing it deliberately. We're OK. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we in the chair. No, no sit down in. Okay. We're OK. Let's go. My man, don't. I 
that's it to her. I know you're, you're a very busy person. You've been here all day, and you're most probably under a lot of stress. She said no, which was good. And then I went on and said, all I need is an inhaler. I'm an asthmatic. I was suffering with it all my life. All I need is an inhaler. I'll be out your way. And she said it doesn't really work like that. But I said to her that my chest is getting really, really tight. I cannot wait for 15 people. There's no sort of leeway in anything that these people do. Everywhere you go, it's our queue, bank, queue, shopping, queue. Flipping out, man. It's a mad system. And they never give you a straight answer. I ask the nurse, do you think that I'm going to be able to get an inhaler? I'm asthmatic. Obviously, I'm going to need it. This her to me. Oh, it's highly possible. <laughs> it's passion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what do you mean it's highly possible? Did I not hear something like, it's because of the a &E where people, why there's more deaths. But people sometimes need like no, no, critical but, attention. But you know what's wrong here is the fact that you have to wait in there for three hours. The it, it, I mean, it's ridiculous, three hours, you know? I mean, people got things to do. Everything's to do with three hours, isn't it? Yeah, it's always three hours. Down, just sit down for three hours. I mean, the money that they, they put into the NHS, yeah? This should be a smooth operation. No, but you know People what? should be coming in and out quickly. It's shocking. All they need to do is give me an inhaler. You need to give me that or I'm gonna die. Another trauma call, another stabbing. Two victims from rival gangs have been injured in the same fight. We've had two trauma calls that have not been... They blued it through, but we've not had any calls. OK. And we've got two of them in. Two, two, two at the same stabbing. time? Yeah. If you get one stabbing in and it's gang-related, you know, there's a very good chance that you may get another stabbing in. If there's a retaliation. And then, again, if there's another retaliation, you know, you won't just get your patient in, but you'll get all their friends in as well. And we have had occasions where rival gangs have ended up in the waiting room waiting for their friends, and a fight started out in the waiting room. And, yeah, it can get very, uh, very dramatic very quickly. It is a dangerous environment. It is. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Are you all right? Who are you looking for? My boy. And what's your boy's name? Three, but we've not had any calls. Okay. The two stab victims who've been treated in resus have been followed by their friends. Right. Okay. Don't use the phone in here. Is the first thing. The two groups are from different neighbourhoods. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's one here and one in five. Two stabbing. Right. Okay. Can we just stop for a second? Can... Trauma lead is down now, so I'm afraid you're gonna have to go through it all again. Okay. And can we just have a recap and let's make a start? Okay. Can you just two step outside for just for a second? You can come back in. I need the space. You can come straight back in and talk to the police. Okay, you're not going anywhere. Just chat to the police from outside. Okay. Listen to me for a second. Okay. You're potentially quite unwell. I know things are going on, but for the next 10 or 15 minutes, you're just going to let us need to do what we need to do. Okay. You might think you're not as bad as you are. But unless we fully check you out, we don't know how bad things are. Can you do that for us? OK, you may can come back in. I've not got any problems with that. But you just need to let us do what we need to do, OK? It might hurt, it might not, I don't know. But let's just crack on, OK? Cheers. Now, the other guy that's been stabbed? No, I don't know. You don't know him? No. OK. Just wait there for me, yeah? 
think it was about a year ago, we had a guy who had been stabbed. The stab victim went round to X-ray and there was these three guys that were running through recess looking for this guy to finish him off. And I basically asked them to leave, to which they said that they were going to do, you know, oh, don't get out of the way, I'm going to stab you up. So I thought, well, do you know what, maybe I should just get out of the way. Got out of the way and they tried to find X-ray, but um, security had been called, so they did a runner. <laughs> Yo, guys, hello. It's a hospital. What? It's a hospital. You have a problem? No, no, no. No, no. Seriously. Who are you with? My other half keeps telling me that I shouldn't get myself into those situations, but I can't stop being who I am. Listen, why, why are you so scared? What's going on? Cos I don't actually want any trouble in here. Listen, guys, if you want to... No trouble in here, do you hear me? It's a hospital. Hey, what did you think you're doing? Yeah, my cousin... No, listen to me, right? There's a reason. There is a reason we have a locked door. Do you listen to me? Yeah, look, the boys just fucking stabbed my cousin. You expect me to... Listen to me, listen to me. And there's police that can actually help you. Do you think... Listen to me! All right, it's a hospital, for Christ's sake. Do you hear me? All right, and there's a reason I have locked doors, OK? Because I have a lot of people coming in here and causing trouble, so I don't need it. You know, I can't protect you, yeah. all right? Yeah, the only people that are going to be able to help you, unfortunately, while you're here, are the old Bill or the security man, OK? Yeah? And Charles is all right as well, yeah? But please, the toilet, you know, straight up there, OK? There's... No, I won't let them through. Someone's got to keep an eye on that other lot because they want to stab them, Mark. OK. Yeah? All right. And I'm just going to have a... This lot. No. No. I think a bit of respect has gone. And I think that's... That is hard because that has changed quite considerably, that there's no respect for what we do and for anybody else that's in the department at the time if they want to get at somebody. They can get through, that's my only problem, you know. Yeah. I'm just going to lock the assessment room. I'm going to lock the assessment room door because they're trying to get in. We have a little issue. There's a rival gang outside with another guy who's been stabbed in the hand. They've just gone out to make a phone call and basically... Yeah, no, no, it's fine. No, those are the ones that are actually scared. The two that came running through, I mean, they, I mean, I can honestly say they shit themselves. And they just thought, oh, fuck. All right, well, I'm going to make this fair on both people because I'm taking the other guy through there. You're allowed two people. You can pick who those two people are. Everybody else goes home, OK? I don't care who they are. You pick the two. That's fine. Same with the other guy, and everybody else leaves this building, OK? <clears throat> right. Listen to me, OK? I know we've got two people through there that have both been stabbed, OK? Mm -hmm. I don't care what's gone on, but whatever, for whatever reason, there's a little bit of needle between you guys and the guys through there. Th that was fine before you started getting all aggressive with people, OK? No, I'm not having it here. I'm not trying to be unfair, but I've, we've got an incredibly busy night tonight. It's packed through there anyway. I wouldn't allow more than two people. I think that's fair. Two people. He wants you, and he said you can pick the other person. Is that fair? OK, cheers. <clears throat> The other thing as well is, okay, 
I don't want to see you two in any of the places other than here or the waiting room. Yeah. Okay? All right. as well is there's a lot of sicky, sp sicky people in here, so just try and keep conversations a bit quieter, OK? Right. Just let you know what I've done. What? He can pick his two people to stay with him. The other one picks his two people to stay with him. Everybody else has been thrown out. So and, th and I'll get his guys to stay with him. Can you get off the side, mate? Thank you. Not for sitting on. And you! <clears throat> we can find your chair if you need it. I don't know whether being unsympathetic to people that are stabbed and things is, is right, because I'm not. I have sympathy to the fact that they don't have anybody who cares about them. Not their injury, the fact that they sometimes don't have their mum and dad come down to make sure they're all right. Sometimes you ring up their mum and their mum doesn't even want to know. And a lot of people don't have anybody to look after them, to love them. I think that's sad. It is shocking, and I am shocked, and I am upset that, you know, we have 13, 14-year-olds that go to school and come in stabbed. It's bloody awful. It's, it's the hardest thing in the world, but unfortunately, I'm in a job where I have to put them back together. And unfortunately, I'm in a job that I can't, you know, if I came into work and I thought about what we saw every day, I probably wouldn't want to come into work anymore. Because it is, Constant. Yeah. They're, they're, they're busy, but they, they've all got something to do, haven't they? And they're like little bees. I think about little worker bees. Worker bees. I'm tired and I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I think something hurts. I got, I got some drunks in there. No, I don't, I don't think so. No, I think no. he's just in pain. My name is Brian Wayne Campbell, and I'm a porter at King's. When you work at King's, you see everything. You don't have to watch the television to see what's going on in Britain. Right here at King's, it takes place right before your eyes. I've experienced so much at King's. I've really learned to tolerate just about anything on and, and this job. In reception, some of the boys from the stabbing incident are waiting for treatment for their minor injuries. Listen, I know you think you're big and brave, awesome. but you do have a problem with your lung. <laughs> so it'd probably be better off if you didn't jump around, because yes. what you have got is a small in the thorax, and it could be much bigger. All right? All right. Yes. Yeah? Could I, have, could I have one of your plaster bottles, please? So I can drink water in that tub. Is that possible? There's a water fountain around there. So there's some cups. Yes. Is there any food? Available. Food? No. No? No. Your guy, idiot boy. Yeah. Well, I just said to him, he's prattling around and goes, oh, yeah, and they tried to stab me up, but they ain't done much. And I went to him, come here. So, listen, I'm not being funny. So you can say whatever you like. I said, but prattling around like that when you've already got a yeah. small pneumothorax, it's just going to make things a little bit bigger. So if you want to continue breathing and feeling all right, I suggest you calm yourself down instead of mucking around. And he was just... He's out in the waiting room with all his mates Is bigging he? it up like this. Yeah. What, the guy from the and stuff. I don't know about that. But they're all... Or... There's a massive gang of them out there. So well, you're one... Again, so each other off again, aren't they? Well, your one needs to leave from a different exit. Yeah. Physically, you know, I can honestly say, physically, you get home sometimes and everything aches because you have not stopped. And you're, obviously your stress levels are really, really high when it's really, really busy. But then you've got another God knows how many patients to sort out, so... 
Listen, you can't go out with all these lines in and everything for a cigarette. Yeah, I went before with a lot more fucking lines. Excuse me, there's no need to swear. That's not very no. polite, is it? No. No, it's not. At the end of the day, you have to get on with your job. And if it's at 2 o'clock in the morning, you've still got another six hours to go. So you just get on with it until you can get home and have a cry and have a drink. Five hours to go. Yay! It's early morning and shifts are about to end. The team have been on duty for 12 hours. It was quite a pleasant night, actually. It wasn't too bad. Just a little mass gang warfare going on in the waiting room and stuff. It's busy, huh? You saw the entertainment. And in you know, the opposing gangs, they brought them to the same hospital. Oh, two boys come out the back from recess. Could I have a horse track, please? That's a horse track, right? Sister Jane getting in it. <laughs> but anyway, so it's all a bit volatile at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, security are going, I can't believe the police have left. The old bill actually yeah. needs to yeah, come down absolutely. here and protect us, because mm. at the end of the day, security can only do so much. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. I just said, so you guys are going in the cab, yeah? Super. I'll make sure that when you leave, nobody's seeing you no, leave. I'm, I'm staying. OK, that's fine, because you're likely to be staying in. I don't want to stay in. <sighs> uh, how deep is it, boss? Deep enough that you need to stay in. Morning, morning, morning. Okay. Welcome to Jamrock, my friend. Pleased to see you. Busy night? It has been yeah. an eventful night. Really? Yes, they didn't stop balling out for our days. They've been trying to kill us. They were trying to kill us. They just kept calling. They never stopped. <laughs> Working at King's, I witness more violence here than I do in Jamaica. Black folks' greatest enemy is themselves. Themselves. When you see a, 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 a situation in in A and E, the stabbings, the enemy is another black person. Most of the time it is, almost all the time it is. Why? On tonight's shift, there have been four stabbings. Every year, more and more young men come to King's with knife and gunshot wounds. Oh. Uh, two stab wounds to the legs, small one on the left, big one on the right. Was not actively bleeding on scene, um, but on the way here started. And we'll see. <laughs> to make a special appeal to young black males. There, there was a time when black folks could blame other people for all of their worries and all of their tribulation and their trials, but not now. Right now, our problem is ourselves, mostly. We are, we are, we are self-inflicting wounds upon ourselves. We're destroying ourselves, and I want to appeal to young black males especially. You, you, you can find life, you can find success, they, they, I think there, there's so many opportunity out there for young black people. Opportunities you probably never had 30 years ago. Make use of it. All I'm saying, give yourself a chance. Drink normally. I had a brandy, 
one in the morning and one in the evening. Seeing as you have got to the grand age of 92, I think if you want a little tipple, we will let you have one. <laughs> you know what they're going to say? Yeah, push me up yeah, when they're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King's College special. Catch up, hitch up, two tablet, one crutching out the door later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.